Hello dear students. Today in this video I am going to start the chapter number 7 Coordinate Geometry. So far we completed first 3 chapters then chapter number 4 and 5 which are not included in the first time syllabus. So we are skipping that one for time being and we will be discussing after completing the chapters which are included in the term 1. And chapter number 6 I will discuss after words. So we are directly going to the chapter number 7, Coordinate Joint. In this chapter, there are 5 topics we have. First one is concept of coordinate geometry, next uh, graphs of linear equation, distance formula and section formula only internal division. And the fifth topic that is area of triangle. But area of triangle is deleted from your syllabus for this year. So we are not going to discuss that. We will be discussing only the first four topics. And out of this concept of coordinate geometry, which is already uh, you have learned in class 9, and graphs of linear equation we already discussed in chapter number three so that is also not a new topic and we have the main two new topics that are distance formula and section formula out of this three topic these three i will discuss in this video section formula i will discuss in the next video so let's start with the basic concept of coordinate geometry in coordinate geometry we are using a cartesian coordinate system to locate the position of a point in terms of two coordinates so for that we need two axes so let's consider a point a in the cartesian coordinate system then the distance from this point to the y axis is called x coordinate so the distance from of a point from the y axis is called x coordinate or abscissa in both the names we we'll call this and next the distance from this point to the X axis is called Y coordinate. This is just a recall of the things what you have learned in class 9. Okay, nothing we are going to discuss new. So we can mark a coordinate that is what is this distance from the point to Y axis? That is X coordinate. So that will be X. And the distance from this point to the X axis, this distance will be the Y coordinate, the value on Y axis. So this is the way so we can plot the coordinates of the point x comma y this is a basic concept and the point where these two axes intersect is called origin its coordinate will be 0 comma 0 both the coordinate will be 0 so this is the basic things you have to remember regarding coordinate geometry and this is the first quadrant second quadrant third quadrant and fourth quadrant Okay, and one more thing is that if a point B is lies on the x axis, then its y coordinate will be 0. So its coordinates will be x, 0. x can be any value, depends on the distance from the origin. Similarly, if a point lies on the another point C lies on y axis, then its x coordinate will be 0, and y coordinate can be any value. So these are the other two things you have to remember. We already discussed in chapter number 3 that how to draw the graph of a pair of linear equation. And on drawing a pair of linear equation, if we get an intersecting point that will be the solution of the pair of linear equation. And if you are given with another one more equation, that third equation, then we can say that there is a possibility, this is the one possibility I am saying these three lines intersect each other not two lines not a pair of lines three and if the question is asking that find the coordinates of the triangle formed by these three lines then the the suppose let's call this triangle formed by these three lines that is abc then the coordinates of this vertex will be the solution of these two equation similarly the coordinates of this vertex will be the solution of this equation because that will give the intersecting point of these two lines. Similarly, the coordinates of this vertex will be the solution of these two equations. Lines. Okay. So this also the possibility which can be asked in this chapter. And also the topics we are going to discuss that are distance formula and section formula, which also will be asked with the graphs of 
linear equation. Okay. Now let's directly get into the distance formula. Let's consider a Cartesian coordinate system as given here and two points P and Q lies in this Cartesian coordinate system. Here we are supposed to find the distance between these two points P and Q. So we need to make a formula for finding the distance between these two points if the coordinates were given. That means the distance between the points P x comma y x1 comma y1 and q x2 comma y2. So we are considering the coordinates of first point is x1 and y1, second point is x2 and y2. So in that case, see, so the coordinates of the first point is x1 and y1. Similarly, the coordinates of second point is x2 and y2. X2 and y2. Now let's just extend this line parallel to the x-axis from the point P. So what will we get here? like this? We know that this is parallel to x-axis and this is this line is parallel to y-axis. So obviously they are perp uh, perpendicular to each other. And what will be this distance? Let's call this point as uh, P, Q, C or something. Okay, let's call it as R. This coordinate is not a matter. What will be the distance PR here? X2 minus X1. This distance will be equal to X2 minus X1. Okay. And what will be this distance? QR. Y2 minus Y1. Y2 minus Y1. This is the this distance. Y2. Only this we are taking. Okay. X2 minus x1 we are taking this distance now as we go this is a right angle then if we join pq we will get a right angle to triangle pqr pqr become a right angle to triangle so according to the pythagoras theorem what we can say that pq is equal to square root of pr square plus qr square Hypotenuse is equal to square root of sum of the square of other two sides. That is a very simple concept. That is equal to what is PR? PR is a x2 minus x1 this distance. Up to here x2 minus this distance. We will get the length of PR. Okay. So PR is x2 minus x1 whole square plus what is qr y2 minus y whole square so this is the formula we can use to find the distance between two points if their coordinates are given square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square even if we write like x1 minus x2 also, this is right because when we take in the square, the negative number will be changed to positive. So, the order of the coordinates in case of distance formula that is not much important. Okay, so this is very very important formula you have to remember. And one more thing you have to remember if a point A is given with the coordinates x and y, and the distance from the origin, suppose you have to find. What is the coordinates of the origin? 0. So the formula can be simplified into AO, origin point is O, okay. AO is equal to square root of x2 is, we are considering x2 and y2 are this one and x1 and y1 are this two. So x minus 0 whole square plus y minus 0 whole square, which is equal to square root of x minus 0 is x so x square plus y minus 0 is also y so y square sorry x square is there okay x square plus y square so this is the formula we can directly use to find the distance from a point to origin just uh, take the square root of square of sum of the squares of these two coordinates okay so this is all about you have to understand regarding distance formula now let's discuss some questions from exercise 7.1 to 
apply this sense formula. First solution is find the distance between the following pair of points. First pair I am taking question number one, option number one. So here, first, for the first point, x1 is equal to 2. x coordinate of first point. And x2, x coordinate of second point is 4. Similarly, y1, that is x y coordinate of first point, that is 3. And y2, that is the y coordinate of second point, that is 1. Now just to directly find the distance. Distance is equal to, what is the formula we have? Square root of x2 minus x1 whole square, x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square, which is equal to square root of, what is x2? x2 is 4 minus what is x1? x1 is 2 whole square plus y2 is 1 minus y1 is equal to 3 which is equal to square root of 4 minus 2 is 2 square plus 1 minus 3 is equal to minus 2 whole square which is equal to 2 square is 4 plus minus 2 square is also 4 that is equal to that is 4 plus 4 is equal to 8. You can also simplify root 8 into 2 root 2 units. Maybe centimeter, millimeter, meter, meter. So this is the way how to apply this formula to find the distance between two points. First you write the coordinates like x1, x2 and y1, y2 so that you will not make any mistake. Because in case of two points, it is not a problem. But in case of question involving more than two points, like three or four points, then you may make some mistakes by putting these values. So just write the value coordinates for that particular line segment in each section so that the mistakes can be avoided. Let's move to the next solution. Determine if 1,5, 2,3, and 2, minus 1 are collinear. So what is the condition? the three points to be collinear that is suppose we are considering a b and c three points a b and c three th c three points and if they are collinear then if a comma b and c are collinear then a b plus b c is equal to AC. That is a condition. Any any sum of the segment of these two should be equal to the whole length. If this condition is not satisfied, then ABC will not be collinear. Sorry, ABC will be like this. Then AB plus BC should will not be equal to AC. Okay, so let's take it. Actually, this question can be simply solved by the area of triangle concept. But as it is not in the syllabus, we are not going to do that. that way. Okay, let's move to the next question. Here, check whether these three points are the vertices of an isosceles triangle. For that, let's consider the point A, B, and C. And these points will become the vertices of an isosceles triangle if it satisfies the condition of isosceles triangle. Like for example, we can call this this point, this is a vertex A and this is the vertex B and this is the vertex C. And coordinates is given here, phi comma minus 2 and here it is 6 comma 4 and here it is 7 comma minus 2. And just to find AB, by using this distance formula, then BC, then AC. If you get any two sides equal, for example, AB and BC, if you get equal, then these are the vertices of isosceles triangle. So just to find the length of the sides of the triangle by using distance formula, that is, find AB, then go for finding BC, then find AC. 
any of these two are equal then that satisfy the condition of isosceles triangle because according to geometry a triangle is said to be isosceles if any two of its sides are equal in length okay so this way by using distance formula you can try this okay now let's move to the next question in a classroom four friends are seated at the point a b c and d as shown in the figure 7.8 from the textbook champa and chamli walk into the class after observing for a few minutes champa asks chamli that don't you think a b c d is a square chamli disagrees using distance formula find which of them is correct whether it is square or not for that you see here first we have to find the coordinates for a what is a, what are the coordinates of a x value is 3 and y value is 4 am i right y value is 4 sorry y value is 4 similarly the coordinates of d that x value is 6 x value is 6 And y value is one. Coordinates we have. Similarly, what are the coordinates of C? X value is nine. And y value is four. Okay. Similarly, what are the coordinates of B? X value is six itself. Okay. And y value is seven. My value is seven. So now you got the coordinates of this all four points. Just to first find the AB, okay? Then BC, AD, and CD. Okay? After finding this length, if you get this all are equal, AB is equal to BC is equal to CD. You have to use the distance formula in each case. If all the sides are equal. Then it can be either a rhombus or a square. That is also not necessary to confirm that is square. After, if you get these all sides are not equal, then you can directly say that it is not a square. If all the sides are equal, then two possibility either it can be a rhombus or a square. Then you have to confirm that is a square by finding the length of its diagonals. If diagonals are also equal, in addition to the equality in the sides, then that quadrilateral will be a square. So first to find out whether all the sides are equal. If they are equal, then go for finding the diagonals. For finding diagonals, BD, this point will be x1, y1. This will be x2, y2. So according to the point, you have to choose the x1 and y1. Okay. Direct apply the distance formula. You will get the answer. Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Actually, question number six also same as question number five. Here, name the type of quadrilateral formed if any by the following points. Give the reasons for your answer. Four points are given. So consider this as the vertex A, B, and C and D. Then consider these are the vertices of a quadrilateral. We don't know which type of quadrilateral this is. So this is A and B, C and D. Write the coordinates in the correct order. Okay, minus one, minus two, and one comma zero. Then minus one comma sorry minus one comma two, and minus three comma zero. We are not supposed to write the minus minus one minus two one comma zero. Then these coordinates here. No, we have to take in the same order. One first. First coordinate, first vertex, second, third, and fourth, like that. Okay. Otherwise, you will get wrong answers. Now you go for first checking the sides. If you get only AB is equal to DC, and that means this opposite sides are equal, as well as BC equal to AD, not by applying the distance formula, then you can say that this is the parallel order. If you get all the four sides are equal, then you can say that. That is a rhombus. Then again, go for checking the diagonals also. If the diagonals are also equal, then that will be square. Okay. Now, if you get another possibility that only opposite sides are equal, 
then I told you that that is a parallelogram. And in addition to opposite side is equal, diagonals are also equal, then that will be rectangle. So you already know the different properties of the different kind of parallelogram. Just refer that one so that you can decide this will be which. Only the thing is that checking for the length of the sides by using distance formula and second is checking for the length of the diagonals by using distance formula. Then by analyzing whether the diagonals are equal or sides are equal or all the sides or opposite sides are equal, you can decide which type of parallelogram is this. Okay, so that's all about this question. Try it yourself. Now we are going to the next question. Question number 7, that is very important type of question. Find the point on x axis which is equidistant from 2, 5 and to minus 2, 9. What is this question state? It is very important type of question. Equidistant concept. Here we have to find the coordinates of that point which lies on the x axis. This is x axis we are taking and this is y axis. So here if the point is lies on the x-axis, what does it mean? Its y coordinate will be zero. The x and the y coordinate is zero. That means y coordinate is we already know. Now we need to find the x coordinate. And which is equidistant from other two points. 2 comma minus 5. So 2 comma minus 5 will be almost okay. We are not taking the correct position. 2 comma minus 5 and minus 2 comma 9. Minus 2, comma 9. Quadrant is same. What is it? It is say that these two points we can put it as A and B. And the point in which we need to find the coordinates that we can put it as P. Okay, this point is P. So according to this question that this PB should be equal to PA. This should be equal. Geometrically, the figure is not appropriate. Okay, just consider the concept. So, first we need to put that point. Let the point P with the coordinates x, 0 is equidistant, equidistant from 2, minus 5 and minus 2 comma 9 or let p be this point be the required point anything we can write so therefore we can say according to the question that p b sorry b p is equal to b p this distance will be equal to a p okay a p so for first b p so for b p BP, what are the coordinates we can write? X1 is equal to, for BP, X1 is minus 2. And X2 is X itself. And Y1 is equal to 9. And Y2 is equal to 0. Then, for AP, what are the coordinates we will get to? x1 is 2. Similarly, x2 is x and y1 is equal to the point a we are taking that is minus 1 and y2 is equal to 0. Now let's apply this condition. We have a b p is equal to a p that implies, let's define BP, what will we get here? BP is equal to x2 minus x1 will be x minus minus 2 whole square plus y2 minus y1 that is 0 minus 9 whole square. Okay, then that is equal to for AP, what will we get here? X2 minus X1, that is X minus 2 whole square plus X minus positive 2 whole square plus Y2 minus Y1 will be 0 minus minus 5 whole square. 
Now square root is there on both sides, so we need to eliminate that one. So for that squaring on both sides. Now squaring on both sides. Squaring on both sides. What will we get? The square root will be eliminated from both sides. Square root and square root will be eliminated. Now x minus of minus 2 will be x plus 2. Whole square plus 0 minus 9 is minus 9 whole square which is equal to x minus 2 whole square just writing in simple step once again plus 0 minus minus 5 is plus 5 that is 5 square x plus 2 whole square by using algebraic identity a plus b whole square expand it x square plus then 2a a square plus 2ab plus b square that is 2x into 2 will be 4x plus 2 square is plus minus 9 square is 81 which is equal to x minus 2 is equal to x square minus 4x minus 2ab according to a minus b square. So minus 2 into 2 into x is minus 4x plus 2 square that is 4 plus 5 square is 25. Now x square is common on both sides you can cancel that one. Then simplify this one you will to get the value of x. 4x here 4 is also common cancel that also so 4x plus 81 is equal to minus 4x plus 25 now bring this term which consists of variable to left side and the constant term to right side so we will get a 4x minus 4x will be plus 4x which is equal to 25 and plus 81 will be minus 81. That is 4x plus 4x is 8x, which is equal to 25 minus 81 is equal to minus 56. x is equal to minus 56 divided by 8, which is equal to minus 7. So therefore, the point is the point is minus 7 x coordinate is minus 7 y coordinate is already 0 it's a very important kind of question okay now let's move to the question number 8 here coordinate we have to find the distance is given so how to do this question so for pq pq is the distance we are taking so for pq x1 we can give it as 2 x1 is 2 and x2 is equal to 10. Similarly, y1 is equal to minus 3 and y2 is equal to y. That is what we need to find. According to the question that pq is equal to 10 units. That is given in the question. The distance between these two points is 10 units means PQ is 10 units. So we can put PQ. What is PQ? We can put the formula that x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square because y2 we have to find. y1 whole square which is equal to 10 units. Now substituting those values in this equation. What is x2? x2 is 10. So 10 minus x1 is 2 whole square plus y2 minus y1, y minus minus of 3, y minus minus of 3 whole square, which is equal to 10. I can simplify this one. Square root of 10 minus 2 is 8 square plus y minus of minus 3 is y plus 3 whole square which is equal to 10. Now on the LH square root and RH there is no square root. So squaring on both sides. Squaring on both sides. Squaring on both sides to get what will we get a square root? The square root will be eliminated. 8 square is equal to 
64 plus y plus 3 whole square will be this is y plus 3 whole square y square plus 3 2 into y into 3 that is 6y plus 3 square that is 9 which is equal to 10 square because squaring should be done on both sides. Simplify this one so we will get a y square plus 6y that is a term which consists of variable unknown that is y square plus 6y and 64 plus 9 is equal to 73 okay which is equal to 100. Now see it's almost become like a quadratic pooling. We cannot find directly as in the case of linear equation. So let's simplify in that way. Why that implies y square plus 6y plus 73. Listen carefully because we have not learned the chapter number 4 quadratic equation. So it seems like a new topic. From these steps, we are going to make into a quadratic equation, which we have to discuss in chapter number 4. But see, but no problem. I will just discuss how to solve a quadratic equation and how to make it 73 and please bring this 100 to left side so it will become minus 100 to make the RHS equal to 0. So what will we get here y square plus 6y plus 73 minus 100 is equal to minus 27 which is equal to 0. LHS is actually quadratic polynomial alright y square plus 6y minus 27 ax square plus bx plus c4 and that is equal to 0 so it is become a quadratic equation it is become a quadratic equation instead of we will call simply a polynomial because there is an equalizer the solution of this equation is same as the zero of the polynomial there is no difference solution of a quadratic equation is same as that the zeros of the quadratic polynomial so we already learned how to find the zeros of the quadratic polynomial just apply that to it. so for that what we need to do first we need to factorize this quadratic polynomial by splitting the middle term so take this polynomial y square plus 6y minus 27 okay this quadratic equation is a separate chapter we will discuss in detail uh, for different kind of quadratic equation and the application problems later okay but here we just need to know how to factor it that is already been learned in case of polynomial just recall that that is enough okay split the middle term so y square plus 6 is the middle term sum should be 6 and product should be 1 into minus 27 product of first and last term is 1 into minus 27 is minus 27 so 3 into 9 that can be the possible combination so we can write 9 minus 3 into y 6 9 minus 3 is 6 and 9 into minus 3 is minus 27 minus 27 i'm not going to discuss in detail how to factorize it okay you already learned this one so separate it y square plus 9y minus 3y minus 27 take y is common y into y plus 9 minus 3 is common remaining y minus already taken so it will be plus uh, when 3 taken outside from 27 there will be remaining 9 y plus 9 into y minus 3 okay that is actually equal to 0 according to this given condition that is the way how we are defining the zero of the polynomial that is same that is a called a solution of the quadratic equation what will we get here so that implies y plus 9 is equal to 0 or y is equal to minus 9 first value the second option is y minus 3 is equal to 0 that implies y minus 3 is equal to 0 or y is equal to plus 3 so two values possible okay just if you get it this way you have to make a quadratic equation and then solve it same as the finding of zeros of a quadratic polynomial by factorization method within splitting the meeting term 
That's all. Okay. Then how these two values are possible for a single point? Let's analyze geometrically. Suppose I am taking this point P uh, in this coordinate, Cartesian coordinate system. There, remember, not up to the scale, okay. I'm just showing how these two values are possible. So the point P is suppose here. The coordinates is uh, P2, comma, minus 3. And Q such that its x coordinate should be 10. So x value should be along this line. There is no other should be 10. Then when y equal to 3, the point can be here. Q will be 10, comma 3. At the same time, when y equal to minus 9 in the, sec in the second answer, the point will be here. Q can be 10, comma minus 9. So that means from this point we can locate two different points with the same x coordinate. x coordinate is same but a y coordinate can be different. One can be above the given point, one can be below the given point. So still both will be 10 units. This is the way these two values are. So this is all about this first part that is distance formula. It's very important concept. And regarding the section formula that I will discuss in the next video. So I hope you got clearly the topic distance formula. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching.